storytelling is so important for the human experience. Storytelling is a way to live hundreds and thousands of lives in our lifetime. What I think is meaningful about what we do is I can tell you a story that acknowledges you as a human being a little bit, and you take my worldview with you when you walk out. We both get something out of that in a beautiful way. What I think is really powerful about long-form storytelling is that you can really dig deeper and excavate and unfold things that enrich the whole story. But there's always the fear that you'll never get to finish it, never get to tell the end of the story. I think that's one of the things that scared me the most about going into long-form television. Here we go. And background. And action. It's five hours of material every year. That's two and a half movies. It takes me two years to make one film. And cut. Excellent. I'm so grateful that we had this opportunity and that we got to finish the story. Beautiful, beautiful. When we started it, we knew the premise and we knew the two storylines, but we didn't really know where it was going to go. And then by the end of that first season, it started to become clear. Do you know who you welcomed into your home? When the pandemic hiatus does, it was a real moment that was kind of beautiful for me to sit down and go, OK, these are all the different ideas that we have. How many seasons is that? How many episodes is that? That was how it kind of came to be a four-season show. You're getting more clarity. My name is Leanne Grayson, and I come from Wisconsin. One of the fun ideas for the show was telling the origin story of Leanne. It can be interpreted in two ways. Is this the story of a fallen angel embodied now in this young girl? As she embraces this, does she become this dark entity that could really change the balance of everything? Or is this just a girl that has these delusions and maybe there's a grounded explanation? Why would she put her own baby in your crib? Both explanations are plausible. That's a fun story that we wanted to tell. Ah! <sighs> One of the hopes when I hired Nell Tiger Free was that we would watch this young girl grow into a woman over the course of the show. And then when we get to the final season, she would be a formidable presence. Do you think that I'm scary? What about now? I love that architecture for her. What about now? Ultimately, what drew her to this house is Dorothy. She's just in awe of Dorothy. Her need for Dorothy to accept her and love her is primal. It's a, a mother figure that she never had. <laughs> At first, it was longing and doing the childlike things, but then getting more physical. She's so tired of feeling bad and feeling wrong and feeling like she isn't good enough. <laughs> Which is all the dynamics from her real mom. She started to feel it again with this family. And she's not going to have it. You should all be very careful. Now she sees the fear in their eyes. She likes this feeling. She starts to get to the premise of, I need to get everything out of this house except for me and Dorothy and this child. I'm never going to let you back in this house. Eventually, Dorothy will come to see that this is a good thing. That's her fantasy. She's going to do everything possible to make that happen. It's just you and me now. Just let me take my child and leave. Jericho has always been the embodiment of love and fragility and vulnerability that represents all of our hopes and fears when we have a kid and whether we're going to fail or succeed in protecting them, and the helplessness that we all feel. That's so scary. Whenever we see Jericho as he's moving through the developmental stages, like his birthday, and he's learning to eat, each of these things, this is the treasure that's being given this family. Every time they hold him, it feels like it's worth it, whatever the cost is.
Servant is about a woman who's forgotten that she was responsible for her child's death and the ticking clock about when she's going to remember. That's why I did this show. I wanted to get to that episode. Her story was so important. I wanted to direct her descent into madness, and I wanted to direct the moment she woke up. <laughs> We're all fighting not to have that painful moment, but the irony is that's exactly the moment we should all be running to. It's a freak accident. The thing that we're scared to say <laughs> for fear that I don't know what's going to happen on the other side. That's very much human nature. I always try to put myself in the mindset of the characters and say, would I do this? There is no higher stakes than losing your child. Having the person that you love disappear in front of your eyes. I would probably do anything to get back what I had lost. Sean has made a Faustian bargain and realizes that there's no way out of this. You've already made your choice. So be an adult and deal with the consequences. It's coming at a cost, and the cost is he doesn't get to talk about what happened to them and the loss. You should have been there, Julian. She called you. But we're not ready to talk about that, are we? And we'll never be ready, because you can't handle real life. One inconvenience and you fall off the wagon. Julian is an addict and keeps on doing forms of addiction, whether it's drugs or materialism. He'll do anything to escape the feeling of guilt and trauma that has associated with the events that happened to this family. Sean! Julian! There's a pretty dark moment where Sean and Julian come to the realization that this girl has to leave this house. We're gonna stop being polite. We may have to cross the line here. Hello, Leanne. It's shocking to all of them. They're questioning themselves, wow, when we're fighting for our family, we are willing to hurt someone else. That's what's scary about having a darker presence near you. You start to take on all of their value systems. They're like, see, you'd do anything too to get what you want. I'm so sorry for what we did to you. It is primarily these four actors constantly interacting for these 40 episodes. It is a play, essentially. They were game for what I was asking them to do, which is, hey, we're going to push the artistic mediums. We're going to shoot these things in unusual ways. And sometimes it's not going to work, but we're going to keep pushing it. And they were so open to risk themselves rather than play it safe. I think they found it exciting to be risking themselves in that way for those 40 episodes. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to get rid of Leanne. The biblical story that we're telling is being manifested in physical form in the house. The house has always been a reflection of the family. As the house is deteriorating, it's almost like you're in your own nightmare and you start to sense that this is not sustainable. Now this has escalated to the point that we're on the cusp of something catastrophic. If she wins, the city will fall and that's only the beginning. The last episode is reducing all 40 episodes to the primal conversation of a mom who didn't get a chance to mother and a child who didn't have a mother to mother her. Will they be able to find balance? If they can't, everything's gonna fall apart. Not only what's in the house, but the whole world. A world out of balance. It's a world of endless suffering. Unless you choose to end it. Ultimately, Leanne has to make a very difficult choice to help this family and the world. It's a beautiful thing that the domestic story of a shattered family and this biblical story of this dark entity meet in this storyline of a mother and a daughter. What was really interesting when I look back on it, 
Because I didn't think of it as my story only, there was a little bit of distance that I had from it that allowed me to be very loose with my storytelling in a way that I've never been able to do. I felt to some extent I was following the muse in my head. I had all these amazing writers and directors to help tell the story. I got to work with an incredible group of storytellers that I normally wouldn't have gotten a chance to tell stories with. You will distinctly feel each filmmaker's hands and why episode 401 is really different than the second one, which is really different than the third episode. And they're very different than my episode, but it's all one family of language. And I do think celebrating our differences in our voices and artistry will make Servant have deep, deep resonance. It's 40 little films that were directed by these incredible storytellers. Cut. Cutting. All right, great, Cut. check it. Servant, I think forever will be a magical experience for me. <laughs> it is something that we had got to do with such purity in such an unusual way. <laughs> when we got to the last episode and we said goodbye to the cast and the crew, it was super emotional because we know this is rare. To have this much love and artistic integrity in something in the industry is very, very rare. And it's class. I just wanted to thank you guys for everything. It, it, I got to do this in a way with, with people I love at the highest level. And you guys you just, I can't thank you enough. It'll always be uh, one of my most cherished memories. And uh, I want to thank my amazing cast. <laughs> Love you all, y'all family. I went to the set for the very last time. I stood there and looked around. I did take one or two pictures. The set's getting torn down. It'll never exist. We'll never tell that story again. I know one day I'm gonna be walking and just start weeping because I don't know how it could happen again to have that magic that bonded us all. My hope is that Servant will be watched for years to come. I want it to be meaningful and stick with you. Having had this artistically pure experience that Apple allowed me to have, I'm so grateful.